My name is Refugio Mata, and this is Camino Stories. Hello, and welcome to the second installment of Camino Stories. It's been a while since we last connected. Uh, it's taking me a few months to record the second episode, but here we are. I am really excited to be able to share my conversation with Martin Miranda, who is a therapist. Uh, it's actually was actually a um, connection that came through uh, Cain, who was the first guest in my podcast, and we had a really interesting conversation. Martin and Cain have known each other for years, so in a way, it it was almost meant to be. Uh, and Martin and I talked about uh, a lot of things, and uh, it was really interesting to hear uh, his journey of becoming a therapist, uh, of him uh, exploring the question of uh, or the uh, process of being a, uh, a, a a wounded healer, and as he describes it. And what struck me the most about our conversation was um, when we started to get into the rewriting of stories and how we have we we have the power to rewrite our own stories, right? And and since then, uh, quite a few things have been have happened uh, since I recorded this podcast, and that affirmed that message that I received and we talked about um, with him. And um, you know, lately I I ponder. I've started to think about a lot about um, how we as individuals sometimes may think that we are broken or may think that we are wounded, and certainly we are. But how that doesn't define us, and that we can be bigger than those wounds and we can be bigger than the trauma and that sometimes we experience these things um, in in a way that helps us to gather information and gather strength so we can then share the the insights that we gain with others and be able to support others in their own journeys of healing uh, and so i um i i was certainly uh, glad that I had a lot of affirmation afterwards after our conversation, but really excited for you to get to hear uh, my interview, my conversation with Martin, and uh, hope that you you enjoy it. Hi. Hi. Hi there. Hi, Refugio. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you for meeting, meeting yeah. me. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, how do I do? I call you Martin. Do I call you Martin or which? Uh, Martin. I like Martin. Uh, but you know, people have been calling me Martin, um, all my life. Depends. I, I like Martin. Okay. It has a nice ring to it, you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, nice to nice to see you and finally get to to meet you uh, virtually. Um, yes. How's your How's your morning going? Uh, good, good. You know, I I woke up early. I had breakfast. I went for my little walk. Mm. Um, good so far. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say I'm doing good. Um, yeah, I I usually do a yoga session with a friend, uh, but I through Zoom in the morning, uh, yeah. but he switched it around and we were texting and I was like, where are you? And he's like, oh, he needed to reschedule to change it to a Sunday. Or actually, no, he can't do, well, a long story, but it ended up not happening. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's it's been, it's been good. Uh, I did some exercise. Um, I, yeah, I have this routine that I started to follow from this um, trainer that I connected online uh and uh it's a mexican trainer uh he calls himself the mexican trainer so that's why i say that too <laughs> oh how fun Online. that's awesome yeah <laughs> that's cool uh, good yeah but um 
yeah but yeah that morning's been good um but what's your is this usually your routine you go out for a walk or hopefully not being too disruptive here what's your routine like Oh no, that's fine. Yeah, uh, th that's usually what I, yeah, I'm getting into the habit of doing that because it's such a beautiful day outside. I love how it's, I love the sunny weather. It it uh, enlivens me. Mm. You know, I, I love feeling the the warmth and the sunshine on my skin. Mm. And it, it wakes, like I said, it wakes me up a little. And uh, yeah, yeah. So um, usually like when I do have to wake up early in the morning, I like to do that. I like to take my time. Uh, getting ready, have, having myself a little breakfast and then going out for a little walk, mm. you know, mm -hmm. just to, to start my day. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I, I love, I was just listening to the birds. Uh, mm -hmm. I try to that be too. mindful of just awareness of mm -hmm. things that I just don't pay attention to. And like you're in the rush rush and you don't get to mm. smell and hear and see and all those things. Um, but uh, uh, what's your, uh, so, so I'm glad that Kain connected us. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you, you connect or how you know him and yeah, just how long. And, and wow. I met him years and years ago, almost mm. two decades ago, actually. Um, I met, I first met him when I transferred to Cal State Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met at a party, uh, an after the semester party pre pride because mm. semesters ended in may mm -hmm. and then i literally the weekend right after school was out was pride so i met him at a party at a house party um one night mm. after my first semester at cal state long beach and uh man what that was one crazy insane party it was really fun i got to meet <laughs> a lot of the uh, a lot of the good friends I still have in my life during that time. Mm. And Kane was one of them. And then of course we, you know, we kept in contact, of course, and we saw each other at school. We saw each other at the, um, the uh, LGBT center on campus. And wow. And we've had a, a lot of history mm. <laughs> since then. Yeah. And so, you know, he ended up being one of my really good friends, one of my best friends. We would go out all the time. We would go out. Back then, I was going out weekly, every night, going to a club or or bar um, in Long Beach or West Hollywood. And he was one of my my club buddies. One of my, yeah, one of my regulars, uh, the yeah. regu one of the regular people I would go out with, one uh, of my go-to people, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds so, so fun. Um, well, yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, but I'm glad that he connected us. And uh, uh, yeah, we, we can have questions around like, you know, your your travels in this oh, life. Yes. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, to start with, you know, I started recording already. So it, this isn't like, you know, like a sort of like, here's the question. And like, you know, like I mentioned what I sent over to you, it's more of a conversation. Um, and mm -hmm. then I'll edit it. I won't edit it like in between. I'll just edit it just the beginning and the end. Um, and then just can free flow with the conversation. But uh, one thing that I, I like to uh, start with uh, is the question of if you were a, uh, well, I'll, I'll contextualize this question. Well, I'll, I'll ask the question first. If you were a superhero, which one would you be in why? Like a, an existing superhero already? It could be a fictional character. It could be um, it could be anything that you want to be. I like like comic mm -hmm. books or cartoons or things like that. Uh, it could be somebody that you look up to. Uh, just anything that you like to embody. Which one would it be? It doesn't have to be the one, but maybe one of the things that come up to you, come up for you. Mm -hmm. Well, what uh, what really. <laughs> I've been I've always been a huge humongous fan of Batman mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if I necessarily want to be him but I I really uh, love his storyline his backstory a lot of people say he's not a true superhero because he doesn't have superpowers 
But I think as we learned last year during the pandemic, you don't have to be a superhero to have, I mean, you don't have to have superpowers to be a superhero. Uh, you could just be a lover of humanity and, and uh, you know, he, he has, of course, he's like a billionaire and he has all these high tech gadgets and all that, but um, it, because he's a wounded healer, you know, and kind of just like I am, actually. I identify as a wounded healer because I'm a therapist and I've, I've gone through a... Oh, uh, you got kicked off? Well, I'm back, back now. You know, I was just wondering if you heard that. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, I did. Uh, so you were saying that Batman is uh, you know, one of your uh, favorite uh, superheroes and uh, not necessarily you uh, would want to be Batman, but you identify Batman as a wounded healer. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, so you, you said that you wouldn't necessarily want to be that person uh, on the flip side of, I'm going to ask the question of a villain uh, because of, uh, you reminded me of, uh, uh, yeah, with a villain, maybe you not you don't necessarily want to be the villain, but you find the villain uh, interesting or something about them that's just fascinating. So if you were to pick one that you find super interesting or entertaining, uh, which one would it be and why? Oh, wow, interesting. That's an interesting question. Um... I, you know, going back again to the Batman mythos, I've I've always loved Poison Ivy because she's a lover of the earth, of the uh, of the environment. She's a uh, an environmentalist, even though she's like more of an envi- environmental terrorist. Um, but she ultimately wants to save the world from its biggest uh, enemy, which is humans. She's trying to teach us in a very extreme way that we're destroying our home, our planet, our world, you know, and she's, her main goal is to protect it and save it, you know. Mm. Yeah, I hadn't thought of poison. I I don't think of poison ivy, but that's a super interesting uh, point regarding uh, her uh her intention, <laughs> her well-intentioned yeah. approach, yeah. but then the consequences that it has as well. And there are a few Batman villains who are like that. I mean, the, the Batman villains have also had troubled story pasts where they've gone through a lot of pain and suffering, but they didn't channel it in a, uh, a positive way like Batman is doing or has. Batman is um, helping others to help himself. And the, for the villains, they, they, their, their trauma, their traumatic experiences kind of had a, a negative effect. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really true. I hadn't really thought about it. Um, well, I, I've been conscious of it, but now that you articulate it, yeah, a mm-hmm. lot of the characters in Batman there, they're like that. They have this quality about them, and you sympathize with them mm-hmm. uh, because yeah. of the trauma. And yeah, there's that. There's that decision or that sort of what, how they, how they transform or use or whatever the word is. I don't even know um, into their to apply their 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 experience into what they, into how they uh, exist in the world. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I asked us these questions because they, uh, um, I have this belief that um, it's almost like the hero's journey, right? That we're all heroes in some ways um, and that we are whole and complete. Um, and, uh, but, the hero's journey is one of complexity and, and it's not all just, um, 
you know, good things, quote unquote, good things, but it's all of our experiences, all of our quote unquote imperfections. And um, some people call it our shadows. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so just uh, wanted to ground it, ground it us in that context. Um, and part of the reason why I call this podcast Camino Stories, because it's all about, it's all about the journey and it's not like an end point, but it's, it's the journey itself and all the twists and turns that you encounter. Um, but why don't we get into, uh, we'd love to hear about you. Uh, uh, what, uh, what do you study or major in college? I mean, I know you're a therapist, but um, you know, what was it that you, that you wanted to study? Was this what you wanted to study? Were you secretly something else? And then you realized that it wasn't the thing. How, what was that like for you? Well, I'm going back to my time at Cal State Long Beach. I majored and got a bachelor's in creative writing. Um, I was uh, pretty indecisive up to that point because that was like in 2004 uh, when I went to Cal State Long Beach. And, and uh, I was, like I said, I was pretty indecisive up, up to that point. And I chose creative writing because I've always loved telling stories or writing stories. Um, it was kind of my outlet when I was younger, when I was a kid, because I was a very shy, very quiet boy. Um, and I would go into the backyard and play with my little toys and create stories, create adventures with my toys. And that was just so fun to me. It was, it was, it was my, um, my little creative outlet uh, from the world, my little escape. And eventually once I think I got into like junior high, early like high school, I started writing the stories. And I would write stories and then people would start noticing and um, I, I just had so much fun creating other worlds and other characters. And so by the time college came around, I knew I had to go to college. That was like a huge expectation for my family and my parents and me. And so I'm like, I went to college. I went to uh, the junior college, Fullerton College, and I started taking my general education classes and just taking other kinds of classes because they sounded fun to me, but I never got around to picking out or choosing an actual major until three years into community college. And then I started, I'm like, I had to choose something, you know, I'm like, I don't know what to choose. I went from, I love animals. I'm like, okay, maybe I can choose zoology or biology, or I love, I love the earth. I love mother nature. Or maybe I can do ecology. And then I was like, oh no, the sciences are too much for me. I, I don't want to, it was just kind of difficult. I hated chemistry. I hated all the requirements, all the math requirements I needed to take for a science major. And so I'm like, oh, what do I do? I love the arts. I, I thought maybe I can do theater. Oh no, it's too intimidating for me. I, don't, I wouldn't make it in that kind of a career. So I, and then of course I, I heard that Cal State Long Beach had a creative writing major, one of the few at the time. And so I'm like, I said, let's go for it. I'm doing it. I'm going to do creative writing. I'm not sure what kind of career is going to, uh, I'm going to have out of it, but I, that's what I did. I applied um, and I got in. My first choice was Cal State Long Beach and I got in. So I went there. I went there. I, I studied creative writing. Of course, I graduated. And then I'm like, after that, I'm like, well, I still don't know what to do because the stories I write, I write for myself. I don't want to have to write for someone else under someone else's guidelines, under someone else's rules or edits, you know. So I, you know, I, I, I owned my degree, but I didn't really do anything with it. I mean, I had a little job as a proofreader at a chiropractic clinic for doctors, other doctors. I mean, my creative writing degree kind of kind of came in handy there, but not not by much. So. Um, that, I mean, I, I went from little uh, oddball job to another. I worked at Disneyland uh, for a few years. And then um, I... Were you like in the stand, like uh, serving people or were you... 
I was doing attractions, ride operator. Uh huh. I was there for a few years. And then, um, you know, 10 years after I got my bachelor's, I went back to school for my master's and this time in clinical psychology because I wanted to be a therapist. And now I, I'm doing that and I love it. This, this job, this degree is a lot more meaningful to me than my creative writing degree, but creative writing, creative writing has always been one of my greatest loves. <clears throat> I feel, speaking of Camino stories and journeys, I think creative writing, the creative writing degree and my background in creative writing and my love for it can help me in therapy with clients. Because there's narrative therapy, which empowers clients, which encourages them to rewrite their own stories the way they see fit. And which totally resonates with me and with creative, their creative writing. So I, I believe I could mesh the two together. Mm. You know. Yeah, I I identify with so much that what you uh, quite a few things that you that you yeah. mentioned. Uh, for example, you know, growing up as a kid, you mentioned playing with your toys and being in your head a lot. That was me. Uh, I would do that or even without toys I remember I would just be by myself and uh, would walk circles around the tree <laughs> and then just imagine in my head all these scenarios of me being like a superhero or like this elaborate stories plots plot lines that I would create in my head uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. so that, that's uh, really interesting to hear um, uh, and then the uh, yeah, the, the creative writing uh, part being uh, you seeing it as a as a as an element that you can incorporate into your practice, into your craft as a therapist. Uh, I, I could I could understand that. I um, my I work in communications, and mm -hmm. my undergrad was in cultural anthropology, mm -hmm. which uh, for those uh, for a person that might not be ne uh, necessarily familiar with either either of those fields. Uh, might not be aware of the connection, but the, I, I find so much uh, that I pull from in terms of the having this holistic sort of bird's eye view when I approach communications and also really looking for what resonates with a person's um, or a, a group of people's a community's um, worldview and um, in a way that it can tap into their um their feelings as opposed to just their mind and incorporating, mm -hmm. uh, being aware of all the different elements of their existence, uh, religion, uh, their uh, connections or power dynamics, um, all kinds of things. So I could, I could totally see, see how that could be that as well for you. Um, I, I want to ask you also yeah. what you were, like before you became a therapist so you started to mention a little bit in the early, when we started talking um yeah. but like uh, and also what kind of like jobs you mentioned a little bit too but if you could expand anything you'd like to uh share um and yeah just generally how would you describe your life like before you became a therapist um i felt myself going looking back i felt myself going in many different directions where I saw no end in sight. I didn't feel like I had a lot of motivation or I wasn't as ambitious. So um, I had various jobs back then when I was in my 20s, early 30s. And uh, I ended up moving to Oregon. I was there for about a year and three months because I, I was, um, in a relationship at the time was extremely toxic for me, but I wasn't, um, I didn't have the self agency to extract myself from that relationship. Cause I depended, I was very dependent on him and his validating me. So I ended up following him to Oregon and I was there for, like I said, a year and three months. And actually when I was there, that was, that was the year, um, 2008 and 2009. 
And while I was there, I actually did apply to school for at Portland State University for their master's in psychology program for, for therapy. And I was by by that time I was 27. And so I actually I got in. And but I knew, and I'm glad I I I recognized this at the time, I knew I wasn't really ready for that yet. Because needless to say, the relationship fell apart. I ended up staying there alone. He left. And um, and then when I got accepted to Portland State University, I was I thought, well, I don't want to be here three more years all by myself. And I wasn't connecting to the community there. I didn't, I had a hard time making friends. It just wasn't my place. It wasn't for me. I was born and raised here in Southern California. And uh, I love it here. I love the culture here. And and uh, it's very different up, up in, in the Northwest. So I just couldn't connect with the people or the community there. So I, you know, I declined the, uh, the admission into that program and I waited, I waited until my lease was up and I moved back to Southern California. And, uh, when I came back, um, I started working for Alaska airlines and um, because of one, another one of my good friends from Cal State Long Beach, I, I met him around the same time I met Kane. His name is Marco. He's uh, a huge, like a, a good best friend to this day, one of my bestest friends. And uh, so he helped me get the job at Alaska Airlines. And um, from there, I, I've always been a, I've always had a wanderlust spirit. So from there, I was able to use my flight benefits to travel a lot more than when I before like when i was in my early 20s and i got to see so much of the world and it's been such a blessing and such a privilege to do that to experience that because of my flight benefits and um and unfortunately um i saw myself entering into a yet another toxic relationship which and that was the one where i finally had the epiphany after that relationship ended because i found myself in a very dark place i was i um i was at that time i was really considering myself a huge failure so in order to help myself get out of that depression because it was, I was, I was very depressed. Um, I had, like I said, I had an epiphany, like a little light bulb went off. Thank God for that. And I, and I said, well, maybe, maybe now, maybe now it's time to go back to school for my, my master's. And I thought of therapy again. I thought of becoming a therapist because like I said, I'm a wounded healer and Perhaps if I help others, I can help myself too. So that was 2016 when I started my master's program. And like two and a half years later, I graduated and I got my master's and I've been practicing therapy since before I graduated. But yeah, for almost three, almost three years, three years now. And I love it. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do. And I specifically chose specialization at the school I went to LGBT affirmative therapy. Yeah. And I'm here and that's, that's what bring me, brings me to where I am now. Uh, yeah. Wow. That's a, such a profound um, way uh, insight. Um, yeah, it's like a roller. It was like a roller coaster ride for me. Yeah. 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 I, I could, I could see that. Um, I have I have follow up thoughts, but I, before I go there, mm-hmm. I uh, uh-huh. wanted to ask you as well. You mentioned this a little bit that you were uh, so you moved to Portland, but you're originally from Southern California, born and raised. Sounds like yeah. um, one question I have is, what was your favorite part of having the experience of growing up in Southern California and where you grew up, and why? 
I guess I back then I probably didn't know it or probably didn't recognize it for what it was at the time, but <clears throat> I love it here because it's so incredibly diverse. The population, the environment. I mean, um, I have access to the beach. I have access to the forests. I have access access to the desert, to the mountains. We are so blessed here in California with what it has to offer. There's so much culture here, rich, rich history, rich culture, uh, beautiful weather, of course, delicious food. And um, I, I, I uh, sometimes I have found myself taking it for granted. But when I was living in Oregon, I didn't. I really, really missed it. And I think I fell in love with it even more. And Kane was pretty much with me the whole, he, he, he would in spirit, of course, but I, we kept in contact through phone calls and texts and emails. He was one of my inspirations to come back to because he was such a huge support and he, he still is a huge support to me. And he couldn't wait till I came back and neither could I. So I could see him again and see my family and all my good friends. Because this has always been my home. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, uh, tell me also. Well, well first, I, I want to share that uh, I, I love LA. I love Southern California uh, too. Uh, I wasn't born and raised here. I was born in Mexico in mm -hmm. Guanajuato, and came here when I was thirteen. I am um, now forty-two, and so most of my life now has been here. And uh, yeah, I love it. I, I don't ever want to move out. <laughs> I've had opportunities and job offers to move to different places and uh, uh, mostly in the Bay. And I just, I, I've said no. Um, but uh, although I do love Mexico as well. Uh, but uh, tell me, uh, what's your, do you have like a least favorite or most annoying part of having the experience of growing up here in Southern California? Well, I think now it's been exacerbated. This reason is because it's ex it's expensive here, and um, that's that kind of puts a damper on things. I think it's uh, the prices can sometimes be uh, exaggerated, but because I mean, one of my um, one of my goals now, one of my biggest goals right now is to by my own place um and so i've been actively saving up for that for a while now and i thought by 20 by the end of 2020 early 2021 i'd be ready to go i think i thought i would i would have enough money to to go out and get my own place and unfortunately with the way the market is now no not yet but um <laughs> I think that's that's a that's a buzzkill for me. The the prices here, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, I, I, that's one of my goals to uh, own a place. <laughs> mm. Yeah, see, yeah. Uh, I, you know, you get to this age, and you're like, oh man, like I want to mm -hmm. have a place of my own. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. I actually have been thinking of uh, of, of even uh, Mexico as well, or in the city where I was born. I love to have a place where I can call my own and go over there and stay and. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, and tell me about, uh, uh, not sure if your family is also from here, but if you could share, uh, uh, some about your family, um, you know, growing up, uh, with them, can you tell me a little bit about them and how they helped to shape whether intentionally or not who you are? Okay, yeah. Uh, my parents are from Mexico. They were born there. My dad is from Chihuahua. My mom is from Zacatecas. Um, so that is I have, very like Norteño, like I'm picturing like ranchos or something. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, and I've been to both places. Uh, I haven't been to Zacatecas since I was maybe 12 years old, which is a long, long time ago. I would love to go back, though. Mm. I ha I've, and I have been to Chihuahua. Uh, last time I was there, I want to say maybe six years ago. Anyway, but both beautiful places. Um, 
and I have two younger brothers and I have an older sister. Um, let's see. And um, well, I, I, I feel like I get along the best with the brother who was born after me. His name is Jose. He has his own family now. He has two sons and he has a wife and they live in Whittier. And I feel like the relationship I've had with my brother has had a huge influence me, at least, I mean, well, I think all my life, but more recently, I feel like um, he has been recognizing me as a positive influence in his life. And I, I never, I never um, thought about that until he actually vocalized it. And uh, he did that in the, one of the best ways possible for me. Uh, first, when he made me his best man at his wedding, that that came out of nowhere. That for me, I was like totally unexpected. I'm like, you're me, you you're choosing me as your best man, really? I would have thought one of his best buddies, one of his closest friends from his childhood, would have been he would have chosen as a best man. And then my brother struck again. He made me his godfather. I mean, he made me the godfather of his first son. I'm like, Jose, really? What's going on here? I was like so taken aback. And so I think it kind of like, um, it really, it really hit me hard. And uh, um, I was so incredibly honored and blessed to have a brother like that, you know? So I feel like Jose, my, my other siblings too, um, but Jose, I think uh, I've had the closest relationship with mm. as far as with my siblings. That's, yeah, that's, that's beautiful to hear. Um, yeah, and you can tell, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would take me for, by surprise too, I'm remembering. Uh, yeah. uh, I had also an experience with a brother of mine. I have three brothers and uh, older. And then one of them, um, uh, I feel like he looks up to me in a way, even though I'm younger than he is, um, because of uh, the things that I've accomplished. And um, uh, yeah, it's just it's just a, a very interesting feeling <laughs> when that it happens. Is. <laughs> yeah, it was for me, to say the least. Yeah. Because I'm I'm six years older than Jose. Mm. But I I in a way I kind of look up to him. Mm. It's kind of like the the roles have been reversed where it feels like he's my older brother. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, for me, my my brother was always the cool one, you know, the one that of the uh -huh. family of, uh, even though he got into a lot of trouble, but he was uh -huh. always the cool one. Um but uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, you know, going back to what you mentioned regarding your um, you know journey to becoming a therapist, and you touched a little bit on that, but maybe to expand a little bit more, uh, you know, as part of our journeys, we are often faced with challenges, um, right? That force us to be to make choices and, mm -hmm. uh, and about different things, uh, especially where we want to head into next into our lives. And, um, you know, often it's not one moment, it can be several moments. Um, although sometimes it can be one moment, like defining moment. And it can also, it could also happen over time as well. So it couldn't be just maybe one, but Maybe you come back around to it, or I don't know. It's just it's just not a straight line. <laughs> it's not like a yeah. clean, you know, journey. You make a choice and everything's wonderful. You know, it's. Yeah. Um, but there are defining moments, and so, uh, you know, I, I for me, um, I've shared this in the past. Um, it was one of them. One of the big ones was coming to this country and starting school here in junior high school and not knowing the language, uh, not speaking 
uh, English, and it was in a primarily white school. Um, I mentioned I have three brothers. Two of my other brothers have schizophrenia. Uh, so that's been hugely defining for me. It was a very painful experience. Um, they are stable now, but by no means have they overcome because it's schizophrenia is a for life uh, uh, condition. And so, yeah, you know, uh, we all have those moments. Uh, is there something in your life? Uh, you mentioned some of it already, but maybe you want to expand on it more or, or maybe you um, think of other critical moments like that where you were faced with, you basically came to a head and you had to make a choice and it sort of directed you to where you are today. Well, definitely, um, when I was living in Oregon, I, like I said, I lived, I ended up living by myself. Um, the, the breakup was a mess with my boyfriend at the time, a huge mess, but I, I developed the courage enough to finally, finally exit that relationship. I ended up kicking him out because the lease for the apartment was in my name. <laughs> So, um, it, you know, we were, we went back and forth, we fought, we argued and all that. And finally, he finally, finally definitively left. So I was stuck with the apartment for about nine months. So for about nine months in Oregon, I was all by myself. And that was the first time in, in my life where I was, I had become independent, even though if we were, you know, it was just that short time, but I did everything myself. I paid my own bills. I, I, I did my own grocery shopping. I did everything by myself. I went out and I forced myself to meet people, to talk to people so I could feel less lonely. You know, I went to my job nine to five Monday through Friday and I took care of myself. And, 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 uh, it, it, it's been like, um, uh, it's contributed of course, to who I am today. And I did all of that by myself. And um, I drove down here when I moved back to California all by myself. And I, I restarted. You know, well, no, I didn't restart, but I started a new chapter in my life. So I feel that stint in Oregon um, was the defining moment for me. Another defining moment for me, which was that, which came about in a more positive way is when I transferred to Cal State Long Beach. Um, because before then, I was pretty much an Orange County boy. Um, I, I stayed local. Um, I was out at the time. By the time I was at Fullerton College, I was out. But I was still very shy, very insecure, hardly any self-agency. And um, making the choice to transfer to Cal State Long Beach ended up being a serendipitous choice. It was a happy accident because uh, when I transferred to Cal State Long Beach, I felt like the world had opened up to me. I was now in the open world of this new level or chapter in my life. And I didn't know at the time that Long Beach was a huge LGBT Mecca and i met all these fabulous people all this all these uh these fabulous cast of characters at cal state long beach and of course kane was one of them and i was introduced to the the great i mean the great city of long beach and and all it, and all it had to offer you know and it and that's been a huge influence on me mm. yeah uh, yeah, I mean, that sounds, uh, building, being able to build community, it's such a wonderful thing. I was just having flashbacks to uh, yeah. when, when I was going to college myself, I went to Cal State, Cal State Northridge. And uh, before that, it was, I was always very isolated. Uh, I, I just couldn't connect to people. It was super hard because of the language barrier and also just 
I don't know, just I never really been growing up in the here in Ventura County, which is where my parents ended up um, uh, to, uh, settling roots here, taking roots. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's majority Republican, uh, super white at that time. Mm-hmm. And just was very, um, yeah, I just didn't, I never felt like I fit in here. And uh, I was, I was already a very shy person also anyways, even from Mexico. So here it even, it was even worse. So I, 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 I was very just isolated and to the point where like, I thought that I would just would never make friends. <laughs> you know? Like I just had this idea that it's just not going to happen because people already have like their own cliques and I just don't fit here. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. not to mention that like, you know, being around, you know, being gay and just being like, uh, yeah, I just don't, there's so many things about me being dark skinned and, you know, all kinds of things, my accent, uh, being, you know, not really having like wearing clothes from like the thrifty store, you know, all that, um, not having a car, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I just felt very isolating and I, um, it wasn't until I, uh, probably around the time that I started, yeah, the, when I joined Caster in Northridge, when I started to find some of the people that to this day have been, um, some of them have slipped away, others still remain very close friends. Um, and uh, and then from there, I don't know, just eventually started to build a community with people. And um, um, along the, 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 the lines of, things that you I, that I care about so I don't know maybe that's then maybe that's what it is too because like you become more clear about what's important to you that it's easier to find I don't know but what you're reminding me is just yeah, that journey of building community and how isolating before that it, it can feel yeah and sometimes I consider myself a late bloomer because um, I didn't really come into my own really truly authentically until god late 20s early 30s and even then i was still learning still struggling with things and i i i attribute that to maybe you know i could be wrong of course i i i won't never really know for certain but i attribute that to not being validated as um a gay boy and um uh, you know the discrimination the stigma the shame that is attached to being gay and not being recognized or celebrated or affirmed for my uniqueness you know and um i it took a toll on me and, and like i said perhaps maybe that's why i was a late bloomer to finding my true self or or at least getting to know what my true self wants to be Mm. um yeah yeah i i feel you yeah it's uh it's been a process for me too same late bloomer i think Mm -hmm. also yeah ashamed of uh shame of uh from homophobia you know coming from my family and my with their direct or indirect ways. And I yeah. think to this day, I'm like st- still like peeling those things layers mm-hmm. and cause they still have a, a deep effect on me even when I don't realize. And it's been a process of dismantling that. Um, yeah. And it's very interesting to see the new generation, you know, new generation that like still deal with that, but in a different way and maybe to a lesser degree, or although, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, um, you think you see something and you think that the grass is always greener on the other side, <laughs> mm-hmm. so who knows, you know, what kinds of things then this new generation goes through. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, 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 I hear you on that. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's turn, I know, you know, when, when we talked, uh, exchange, uh, online, we talked about, uh, you know, things that were your, on your mind, uh, 
and oh yeah uh -huh. yeah uh, part of the part of the uh, the driver for this conversation or this podcast rather it has been uh yeah just exploring you know what's in people's minds and uh their practices and where they're at um you mentioned uh your explore if i'm paraphrasing paraphrasing it right uh you mentioned that you're uh you know exploring your relationship with nature or something like um and uh yeah can you can you share what what you have been thinking about regarding that and what's around you in other words the world around you yeah definitely because uh when i do therapy with my clients i encourage them to increase their relationship with nature. And I feel like I should be practicing what I preach, which is one of the reasons why I'm going on me on these little walks when I have to wake up in the mornings, early in the mornings. And um, even if it's just a few minutes, a few minutes, 15 minutes of self care, going out, like I said, feeling the warm sun on your face, listening to the birds chirping, um, feeling a nice breeze. Nature can be really reinvigorating. And, um, and I tell that to my clients, because we are from nature, you know, we're born from this world too. we're part of this world too, as much as anything else is. So reconnecting yeah. to it, I feel is is vital is a an extremely important element to self care. And I feel like I've taken that for granted. Um, and I, I need to, I feel, reconnect with nature better. And I'm, like I said, I love it. I'm a lover of nature. Uh, I, but do I go out there and I, do I explore it as much as I can? Or on my days off, do I, would I rather sit at home and binge watch TV? Which, which is what I've been doing sometimes. Well, the pandemic kind of made that worse, but still I need to um, take advantage of, of what I have around me. Like I said, I love California. One of the reasons I love California is because I have so much access to that. And sometimes I feel like I'm kicking myself in the butt because I, I don't, take advantage of, of these opportunities. Mm. You know? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I love, uh, one of my favorite things to do is to go to the, uh, either the beach, uh, and I love to, there's this particular beach that I love to go to uh, up in um, Ventura County, which is north, the, the beach is Sycamore Cove, which is north of um, Malibu. And I love, you know, PCH, like driving through that. And mm -hmm. I take the back roads to um, sometimes uh, uh, once I get off, like in the Camarillo area, and then you start to, to get to the one to the to the PCH and driving through there is like, it's all like a lot of uh, farming fields. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you get to uh, smell, I love the smell of um, lettuce and yeah. cabbage and like uh reminds me of always re reminds me of my dad uh uh my dad uh when he that that's part of the reason why he we live um my family lives here in ventura County is because one of the first jobs that he had was uh in the in the fields as a uh, uh, uh yeah as a, as a farm worker and uh, from there he went to landscaping but mm -hmm. Uh, even then I remember like when he brought us here and uh, he'd bring the groceries from the store and he'd be like, cause we didn't go anywhere. So like any little thing that feels that was brought to us or we would get to go to the store, it was like a treat, <laughs> like an adventure, you know? So like hearing the smell, like getting the smells of the vegetables and all that. It's like, it's like such a, I don't know, just triggers for me memories of that. Um, of being like, oh wow, you know, like we're we're out, you know, we're somewhere not cooped up in like one room. Uh, yeah. that's like in the summer, like sweating it out, you know. Um beautiful. 
Yeah. So, so it reminds me of that, but, uh, but yeah, I, I love to, yeah, I love to go to the beach and I love to go to the river. There's a local Creek here, uh, by Moore park that actually, um, one of my, uh, he's, uh, my, he's a, the leader of a, of a Aztec dance group that I, I am part oh, cool. of. Yeah. yeah. And, and he found it. And sometimes we go and do uh, prayers, uh, ceremonies like early in the morning, although, we did it once, but uh, we've done it in other places, like near near a hill or a mountain or things like that. And it's such a yeah, it's such a beautiful experience um, to just be able to connect um, because there's definitely a connection that's severed. I feel sometimes when all we are um, uh, all, all all we're thinking of is just. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I, I, what comes to me is like this phrase of uh, the remembering, like the memory, tapping into this memory that we have inside of us, um, and how we are part of this broader system and part of um, yes. that's nourishing us, and we can take from it. We can take, we can take from the sky, you know, the energy, and we can take from the earth beneath us. Um, and, and it, you know, it's, we don't have to be like physically connected in order to have that connection that we can feel that energy being washed over us. And that's definitely what I feel when I go to the ocean. Although I don't know, sometimes I feel like it's a, it's maybe it's a astrological sign thing too. <laughs> I don't know. Cause I'm a Pisces. So oh, really? I, oh, yeah. Okay. It could be. So, so we're supposed to be like in the water and stuff, but, um, oh. But yeah, you know, I, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I truly believe that, you know, that it's the, the connection that you can have with, with nature is such a powerful one. Yeah. And sometimes I feel, well, it, it should be a go-to for everyone, but that's easier said than done. But, and I do want to give credit to my boyfriend who has, um, taught me to be, more outdoorsy i guess for lack of a better term because mm. he go he goes on hikes a, a, a lot and i'm never i've never been like an avid hiker i've never you know he that's that's his main form of exercise and my main form of exercise for like the longest time was just going working out at the gym or whatever um but for you know for hiking i i get to um i get to exercise and i get to experience beautiful nature and so i'm glad that he's been able to show me that and he's he's shown me all these different trails that have, have always been here in my backyard i've never just got i've just not gone to yeah uh yeah. what you said reminded me too when you said exercise the main form of exercise it reminded me of uh, uh i uh have heard or not how could i put it this um i'm part of this group that this men's group and we explore um uh teachings from uh like toltec uh mm -hmm. wisdom and cosmology mm -hmm. and things like that and yeah it's a really interesting group and uh talking about community like right that once you start to have more clarity around you and you start to seek out the things that like are really they call you and anyways yeah. this is one of those things for me and out of that i rem this is remembering making me remember how we talked about how um one of the best things to get out of the realm of the mind which is the realm of like the running thoughts and like all the voices and that we all have is um to get more into the physical and it doesn't matter what you do. Um, I, think I might have mentioned also in my conversation, this literally with with Cain uh, was any any time you know that you are feeling anxious or things like that. Or uh, one of the best things that you can do is like just exercise, do push ups if you need to, sit ups, um, go for a walk, mm -hmm. just do something physical that mm -hmm. will get you out of that mental space because in the mental is where this. Um, voices and where this realm lives like that's where that's where 
that's where it can um there's uh i can get into this other other things around spirituality and things like that but uh, the way that it explained to me is yeah like if um almost like those things that are like are predators to you that are mental predators or like are just you know delusions of the mm -hmm. mind in other words mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally agree with you. Um, doing doing something physical when you're when you're stressed like that, or you're you're experiencing anxiety or some sort of panic, um, exercising, uh, tapping into your senses are, are great ways to ground yourself. Mm. You know, tapping into your five senses, your your sight, your hearing, touch, taste, smell. So, oh, definitely. That definitely, uh, and I've, I've I've told that to clients too. What can you do physically to ground yourself to get to get you out of that mental space? Just like you said. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that reminds me. You you also brought that when uh, in in the stuff that you sent me. You brought that up regarding the um, the body and the mind uh, yeah. and being uh, you know how it's. It sounded like you were expressing gratitude because you were saying that you know how it's keeping you alive and healthy and given all the oh, yeah. unhealthy things that you've done whatever those may be you know and yeah. that uh this feeling of taking for granted the wisdom of the body of and the mind yes 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 sometimes and i and i sometimes i do i still feel like i do but you know it, you know like we said earlier life is a journey um, we're learning something new every day about others, about ourselves, especially. And I have to remind myself, and sometimes it takes more, more effort than others, you know, trust the wisdom of your body. It knows what it's doing. I'm a healthy 39 year old man. I haven't had any huge mistakes or health issues you know since i was born so um it knows what it's doing you just got to help it out you know treat mm -hmm. it right mm -hmm. treat it right you know and yeah. i'm glad for that i'm glad i'm glad that i know that i know that it knows what it's doing and because for some people that's not the case and I have to remind myself to be grateful, to practice gratitude, not just for my health, but for other things too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like trusting your instincts, trusting that, um, like you're saying the your body, uh, yeah, that, that being in your body, uh, and that, uh, what, what was coming up for me too, like, as you're saying, that is this, um, this uh, one thing that I've been practicing lately, uh, trying to at least more mm -hmm. of is to the gratitude, gratitude for mm -hmm. yes, the wisdom of the body, uh, but also the the state that I may be in. And because sometimes I get so frustrated because I want it to be different, or I want the situation to be different, mm -hmm. and and then there are things that like, you know, like it's, I'll get frustrated, especially if like I, I feel that I'm doing, I'm trying so hard to like not have things the way that they are. And yet they just are and they just come back and they or they seem to come back and to this in the same way. But then also realizing that number one, that might not be the entire um, picture like I made I'm, I'm and that's how I'm interpreting it but there's it might actually be quite different um, mm -hmm. this might be a, a another point of the journey but I just uh, I just can't tell where I'm at if I'm like further you know how much further I am in the journey yeah and yet I feel like I am still in the same place um, so whatever that may be just having this um this gratitude for for one number one having my own drive and like maybe this is where you 
I um, intersects with what you're saying with like my body and my, my the wisdom of my body and uh, my mind and just my will like the, that I have that like I'm grateful for that but also being um, being uh, uh, grateful that and aware and hum- a humility that there are bigger things that I can't control. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I wish that I could, but I can't. Uh, in, in my men's group, actually, uh, a week mm-hmm. ago, we were talking about the analogy of the bus driver that mm-hmm. uh, just feel having that feeling of like, like, dude, you're, you're, you ain't the bus driver. As much as you like to feel like you do, uh, mm-hmm. you, you will have control over like if you're going to get off the bus or like, you know, how long are you going to be in the bus or I don't know what you do in the bus. Uh, but sometimes a driver is life and God, whatever. Um, and those are things that like are, are sometimes a little tough to accept because you want to, we want to control everything. And, and historically humans have behaved in such ways where they want to control and conquer. And, um, and it hurts knowing that we can't all mm. the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, well, the other thing that you mentioned is, um, you know, uh, how much you've changed throughout the, the years as well. And uh, where you're at with your uh, what the, your evolution as a person, like, as opposed to like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and uh, the insecurity and inner saboteur, you know, the role yeah, that it plays yes. in your life, you know, like, yeah, where, where do you, where do you, what do you see about that? Well, I, I have, has, have especially noticed a big difference in my life within just the past few years, just a handful of years. A lot of that I credit to going back to school and I am, I want to say that I'm proud of myself for making that decision when I was in that dark pit of depression a few years ago after my previously failed relationship. I'm glad I was able to, I was, um, I guess, wise enough to make that decision. Even when I was like totally depressed, feeling defeated and insecure, I still made that decision to go back to school. And so I've seen myself grow a lot more in these past few years. Um, But like, yeah, like 20 years ago when I was 19, I was, you know, I was at junior college, still trying to figure out, like I said earlier, I didn't know what my major was going to be back then. I was just taking class after class just for the fun of it, just because it sounded interesting. I didn't know what my major was going to be. That was 20 years ago. Um, I had my first boyfriend at that time. Um, Obviously, that didn't work out. That was a mess. And then 10 years ago, when I was 29, um, I had just moved back from from Oregon, Uh, well, not just moved back, maybe like a year or two after. And uh, that's when um, I was working, still working for Alaska Airlines, but starting to travel the world a lot more, which was awesome, which I feel like has also helped me grow because I've got to experience different places, different people, different cultures, different foods. And I love it. I love it because this, this whole world is like, can be a playground, you know, because like I said earlier, I have a wanderlust spirit. I love to travel any place I've never experienced before. I would love to get to know or see. Mm. So, yeah, I think those have, those have been a huge, huge um, contributing factors to helping me grow and to helping me be the person I am now. Travel and heartbreak. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I've heard of the role of, of pain uh, as a, mm-hmm. you know, 
but uh, yeah, I found what you said uh, very powerful in that in spite of, or, well, that's what I heard in my mind when you said that in that moment, making that choice. Because sometimes, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, sometimes people don't don't make a choice or they don't, at, well, for whatever reason, but there are moments when, even when you're in that state, somehow you find yourself pushing through. And again, it goes back to trusting the wisdom of your mind and the wisdom of your body, because all it, ultimately what it's trying to do is keep you alive and healthy and safe, your mind and your body. Mm. And at the time, I, like I said, I was majorly depressed because of yet another failed relationship, which was a very toxic relationship. Nevertheless, I was still very heartbroken about it. And um, my mind gave me the idea, I think now it's time to go back to school. You know? Mm. And I did. And I did. Yeah. And what a coincidence that it's just like, that's what it did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like you knew. I had that epiphany. Yeah. Um, well, thank, thank you, Martin. Uh, uh, lastly, you want to share what you've been up to lately, like any side projects, writing, painting, poetry, anything that you've been doing? Um, yeah, I've been, I've been continuing my writing. Like uh, I'm writing, I'm a, a huge lover of fantasy, fantasy novels, epic fantasies, sword and sorcery, stuff like that. So I've been, I've been doing, doing my little, my writing. I'm, I'm writing like a trilogy. So I've been working on that uh, every now and then when I have time. Um, I've gotten into like coloring. Coloring is, uh, it, it, all of this is like an escapist way of, of self-care you know i love to escape whether it be escaping into the own stories that i'm writing or into coloring um but uh also let's see what else have i been You're re reading of course i love to read fantasy novels murder mystery novels and um and of course like you know like i've been working on getting my own private practice going um, I recently left an agency here in Santa Ana, Latino Health Access. I was working at one of their downtown FRCs for a few months, but an opportunity arose where I could, um, I, I got hired at, at another counseling center based in Orange, but it allows me to do a little private practice on the side, which has been my, uh, my ultimate goal since I was in school is to do private practice. And so I've been trying to get that off the ground. You know, I'm not licensed yet, so it's not my private practice. I'm working with a supervisor who allows me to do that. But when I do become fully licensed, um, then uh, it, it'll just be me, it'll be my, pra my practice. So I'm just getting my feet wet with that, uh, getting a website done, putting myself out there on social media. And yeah. Cool. That's that's what I've been doing right now. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And what are your social media where people can find your website or anything that you want to share? Okay, so on Instagram, on I am MSM therapist. Um, um, I have Facebook. My my Facebook page for my for my psychotherapy practice is um, Martin S Miranda AMFT. And I'm, I don't have my website yet. I am working on that, actually. It should be done within a couple of weeks because I'm, I, um, I'm working with a team to help me make that because I'm just not, I don't have a lot of time and energy to figure all that out. I'm not super savvy when it comes to stuff like that, so I might as well get some help with that. But um, I'm also like on Psychology Today. I have a profile on Psychology Today, Martin Miranda. Um, if you look up therapists in Orange, Orange County area, I'm there. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Martin. So there you have it. There's my conversation with Martin. Uh, it was really a pleasure to 
get to hear his story and uh, just realize just how much we actually had in common. We hadn't met. I haven't met him in person. And it was really it was really interesting to hear, you know, all the similarities that we had. Uh, and, uh, you know, the thing about trust in the wisdom of the mind and the body and that sometimes pushes you through in spite of everything seeming like it's a mess in your life. And, uh, and then just that, what a beautiful thing that is. And, uh, and then just having faith as I'm saying it, I, I'm just realizing that that has a lot of undertones of, of just how, how powerful faith is and sometimes the way that it works, even without us realizing it. Um, but anyways, um, Super excited, super grateful that uh, Martin was able to connect with me and was able to share his story. Uh, gratitude to him and gratitude for you to for listening to the second episode of this podcast. And uh, we'll connect soon on the third episode and uh, hope that you all have a wonderful day.